So, um, welcome back everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Where today I'm going to talk about the tale of Princess Kaguya. This is going to be a spoiler-free review, kind of, because it's based on a fairy tale. So I'm going to talk some about the fairy tale, because it's a fairy tale. Like, you can yeah. just go online and read it. Mm -hmm. um, this is a 2013 Isao Takahara film. Mm. So the same director as Grave of the Fireflies, oh, wow. um, best friend of Hayao Miyazaki. Uh, so it's a Studio Ghibli film. The quality is definitely up there. Um, and it's based on this fairy tale called The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter. Oh. And the basic concept of this is that this bamboo cutter goes out in the forest, oh. uh, cuts down this one uh, bamboo tree, and inside is this miniature little infant girl. Yeah. Inside the bamboo? Inside the bamboo. <laughs> uh, and so he takes her out and then takes her home. Uh, and then when he goes back out into the bamboo forest uh, every day after that and adopts her, um, gold starts appearing. Whoa. So he's, he, um, uh, and she, she grows up to be this very beautiful girl, and um, she attracts all these suitors who come to her. <laughs> and so it becomes kind of a fairy tale. Of, and, uh, so, for example, um, her suitors ask her to, they all want her to, her to, her to marry uh, them. And so she t um, tells them, well, then, you know, go to the top of Mount Fuji and bring back the legendary phoenix that, that, that uh, oh, uh, that, uh, tasks. The rest of the, you know, <laughs> impossible things. Um, and so it's kind of, you know, they try to do that and they fail and so forth. And then <laughs> things happen from that, that point on. Um, what's interesting about this is that, um, the themes are kind of different than what you might expect from a fairy tale. Um, it's also long. It's about two hours and 10 minutes. It Which is, is pretty long. Yeah, I mean, but, mm, 90 minutes is a, kind of a, like a standard movie, like, mm -hmm. give or take. And, and especially for animation. animation yeah, that, that doesn't, is impressively yeah. long. Uh, it also grows $24 million worldwide. Which for a Japanese movie is that's dang good. good. Yeah. Um, it, uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, its uh, critic rating is currently 100%. 100%? Yeah, 100%. It won, like, several dozen awards the year it came out. Um, and that's actually a good way of, of explaining it. It's wow. got like an 80% or so, you know, user review rating. Um, this is an art house film. Mm. It is very much about creating emotions through visuals. Oh, wow. You know, it is beautiful, but it's also one of these just very deliberate, mm. deliberately paced, generally quiet. But with some sort of big scenes. Yeah, this is not Naruto. It's not, it's, yeah, not, not a big Naruto all action movie. scene, exactly. uh, fast motion. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, and it's it's definitely it's a it's a fantasy film. Um, obviously, <laughs> the premise. Um, <laughs> I don't know. You haven't found a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, a little girl yeah, inside yeah. a bamboo. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, um, that would be illegal. Um, and uh, but it, it's set in very much. Um, I would say roughly Edo or Tokugawa era Japan. It's not. Um, I don't think he, he gives it a specific date or anything. Mm. Uh, it's not very clearly in any one era, but it's definitely that, you know, sort of classic um, period. I like that it, fuzzy vase. It, it, it does feel like it may be more like Heian era, so before the shogunate, basically. Um, there's an emperor, yeah, because there, there's, no, there's no shogun, the emperor comes to visit her. So I think it is pre-shogun. Um, so wow. it would be like 1400, 1500, something like that. Ooh, nice. Um, the, the earliest written version of it is from like 1600. Um, but they're, like, they're not sure how long it existed before yeah, that. It's, it's got to be uh, oral for quite a while, mm -hmm. and then somebody says, oh, we got to write this down. Totally. Uh, um, so that said, it is Takahata treats it as kind of like a costume drama. Oh. So it, it is more about these characters and the situation they're in, and the, the things they feel as a result of the strange scenario they're in. Um, so, uh, like I said, very deliberate pace. Um, now the thing is, it's a fairy tale, so the story is kind of straightforward. You know, you think of a Cinderella or a Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. There's not too much to those stories in terms yeah. of doing stuff. So, you gotta, so what he does, which is brilliant, is he delves into the emotions of the characters. Mm. Uh, that gives it more depth, then. It's mm -hmm. not just a flat story. It's like the emotional content of each individual character's mm -hmm. experience. Great example. Um, Beauty and the Beast. If you remember, partway through that movie, there's a scene where Belle is exploring in the castle. And she's going down this dark hallway, past all of this torn furniture, and there's a ripped painting yeah. of the prince. And she comes upon the rose, and then just as she's about to touch the rose, the, the beast comes in. Think about how she's feeling in that the moment. Emotions. Wow. Emotions that moment. Yeah. And that's what he pads the story, if you will, with mm. is those sorts of scenes and those wow. sorts of sequences. Uh, and there's some extra characters. That and makes so it forth. pretty rich. Then. It, oh, it's it's very rich. I mean, I, I actually ended up watching this in three parts because I get like half an hour in and say I need a break. Mm. You know, I, I just kind of do process the emotions of what they're making me feel. You definitely feel Moe for Princess Kaguya. <laughs> you definitely get the connection with her. Um, um, so when you talk about the animation, oh gosh, um, this is a Studio Ghibli film. 
That's and, it. That's yeah. it. <laughs> so he just pours it in. We've got some good animation. Definitely. <laughs> very high budget. Although never unnecessarily. Hmm. There's a shot very early on where there's you, you cut to you know, the sky. There's a crow that's, you know, circling above. And I looked at it and I was like, somebody drew a crow, slapped it on a blue background, and in the software, drew a curve. <laughs> and had, and it, just, had it just <laughs> goo that curve. And I was like, this is a Ghibli film. Why well, did you do that? And I realized it's because Takahata was like, this shot is to show you a bird in the sky. It's not elemental to the story. It's mm-hmm. accidental. Or not accidental, but like mm. to accent yes. the story. It's not part of the story. It's mm-hmm. accenting the story. Exactly. So, um, but also, so there's a, there, there are scenes, for example, with, with Princess Kaguya in carriages as she's going sort of back and forth to things. And like, there's one scene where it's bouncing around and she's not moving at all. There's another scene where it's bouncing around and she's bouncing around. I was like, what's going she, on? And I, I went back and, or something. And, and, and I realized in the first scene, she's very serious and quiet within herself. Oh, the internal yes. versus the external. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So he, he's that's definitely... That's an intentional... Yeah. So he's weaving that stuff into the animation. Such subtlety. I um, mean, that's that's pretty cool. And this is what I love about Takahata. So do not take this the wrong way. Um, but Miyazaki um, always prefers naturalism. Mm-hmm. He's always trying to make animation that looks like real people moving and talking and interacting. Mm-hmm. Um, even in like a Princess Mononoke, you know, characters aren't leaping 30 feet mm. and doing these sorts of things. It, it's, it's grounded even in a relatively fantasy film. Reasonable physics. Mm-hmm. Reasonable physics. Um, you know, there, there are a few times in his career where it kind of moves away from that. Mm-hmm. And obviously you have some fantasy sequences. Yeah. Um, Takahata, in contrast, is an animator's animator. Mm. So if a character goes running out into a field and is feeling very joyous and excited, the animation style might shift to be more, not sketchy, but to be more energetic. So, so a frolic versus a run for your life. Exactly, yes. like, like more of the realistic of the emotion mm-hmm. of the situation and how it's portrayed. There's a scene where, without getting into spoilers, um, one of the characters imagines running away and runs away and the lines literally start getting very abstract mm. Mm. because it's, this character imagining this, <laughs> and it's all about emotion. It's all about yeah. the, the the feel of motion and things moving, um, as opposed to trying to get you know the naturalism of the actual action. But done as with Studio Ghibli sort of ability to do animation, right? So it's, wow. it's, it's, it's not a blur. You know what it, it is, but it's it's, it's very interesting. Um, so the movement always feels very dynamic and fresh. It's one of the nice things. Is it, it, it's and it, this is in a story. So the, the way it twists a bit in this is that. Um, in the original story, and of course there are multiple versions, um, uh, she gets this money and they sort of build things up um, and, and you kind of use the money to, to you know, buy expensive kimonos and so forth. In this, in, in this film version, uh, they use the money to like build a palace in the city. Wow. Um, and to you know, set her up as a princess hmm. and establish her and, and there's a, she has a whole coming out party and all that wow. kind of stuff. Coming of age um, celebration. And a lot of it is about what that's like culturally. Oh, wow. Um, so we'll get to that in a second. That's but comedy. in those scenes, like, there's very little movement. Hmm. Um, so they will still animate the movement. I mean, if somebody is very slowly moving to something, they will, they will animate every single frame of that because it's all about those quiet, still moments. moments. Yeah. Those, um, those, those, those can sometimes speak more than a high action scene. I, I don't know how many high action scenes I've lost <laughs> track of what's going on and it's yeah. just... Blurry, lots of blurry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't tell who's in the ballet of the fight scene doing mm-hmm. what at some point where something that's a slow, deliberate action mm-hmm. that's captured well yeah. speaks volumes, mm-hmm. especially when you get a detailed background yes. or a setting that oh. has all these different people who are there or actions that's, mm-hmm. you know, that are taking place in a, in a ceremony. Yeah. Ceremonial and and that, that is a good thing to point out is that um, Ka- uh, Princess Kaguya has some adventure scenes. Like, like, so there, there are sequences where, like, as a kid, she's out playing with other kids, and um, like one of them, you know, uh, falls down a, a, a slight incline and you know hurts his leg, and it, it's nothing dangerous. But mm-hmm. oh, I need to help you out. Uh-huh. Go down here, 
it's not an action sequence, but there there is tension. If you there's will. the tension, yeah. Um, the so there's that kind of stuff, and then there, there's there are a few amazingly animated sequences when where these uh these court nobles are out trying to prove their love for Princess Kaguya oh, and go out wow. on their big adventures. Um, <laughs> in some cases, it doesn't it usually doesn't go well. But anyway, um, <laughs> the so, impassable task. Oh, it's it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> um, and yeah, and, and it, what, what's uh, Takahata is just his his understanding of and appreciation for animation as a medium is just mm. mind blowing here. Um, um, now, this is a fairy tale, and Takahata does not shy away from this. Mm. So, in, in, a, in a very typical sort of anime thing, she shows up in this bamboo stalk, and gold <laughs> appears, and no one explains how she got in the bamboo stalk, right? Um, <laughs> well, that's where you find right, you know. Uh, in, Fairy tale people, totally it, it, uh, usual spot. But. And, and you know, there's some stuff later, kind of not explaining, but going into a little bit more. Um, but you know, the, yeah, there are folks who are like, "Well, they never explained why that happened." Well, you're not going to get yeah, that explanation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, if, I, if I if I do have one tiny little um, piece of feedback, if you will, is that uh, Princess Kaguya grows very quickly, supernaturally quickly. So like, he picks her up, and she's you know, this tiny little thing in his hand. Um, and then when, as soon as he decides to take her home, she suddenly grows to the size of a normal infant. That's a rapid rate. Very rapid rate. Um, and and you, they animate that. Like, you see her grow. Um, and then he takes her home, and, she, and then like, she'll be out playing, and suddenly you'll realize she's like a couple of inches taller. Um, what is he feeding her? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and that's just kind of part of the fairy tale. She's growing very, very, very fast. But apparently, the cat again. I don't think this is a spoiler. Um, that aging appar- apparently goes to normal oh. um, because there are points where, like you know, and you know, three years pass, and you see like, okay, yeah, she's so be she's three years older. older. You know, otherwise she'd be like forty. Yeah, um, if she know? kept <laughs> up at that speed, she must have been, had a quick curve up and then yeah. uh, kind of leveled out to a normal. And that's the thing. Um, and, and I'm not clear. It's, the story takes place over the course of her sort of. Um, up to adulthood, so up to she's maybe, and they're very unclear, but maybe late teens, roughly. Um, and like, but, but they don't make it clear when that happens or if that's happening. Mm. So there are moments where I'm like, is she like twenty yet? Did or we leap forward in leave? time, right. or did she grow and stop growing? Mm-hmm. Where exactly is this? The, this time travel coming from? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so to have something that is. They take great pains to both narrate and say, you know, the princess grew very quickly, mm-hmm. and to actually animate it, mm. and then halfway through that stops, but they don't mention it. Mm. That was just a little jarring. Yeah, so yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. It's like stepping on the accelerator, mm. and suddenly you've come to a complete stop, and uh, ah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would at least expect like squealing brakes or something. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so dialogue. Let's talk about characters and such. Um, what's great about the films? I watched the English dub, uh, done by Disney. And, wow, they did a great job with this dub. Um, the, 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 really, the central three characters are the Bamboo Cutter, his wife, and Princess Kaguya. Hmm. They have the most screen time. Uh, and the Bamboo Cutter is <clears throat> overjoyed that he gets this chance to raise a princess. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, <laughs> his wife is much more pragmatic. Um, she's just like, hey... Cool, we get to raise a girl. Fun, you know. Um, and we, we do this thing, um, and uh, and there's some wonderful scenes in there. So so his dialogue is um, uh, he he starts very plain speaking. The bamboo starts very plain speaking, and then once they have the palace, and he's talking to people, it's much more. Thank you so much for appearing here. We're very very glad you could be here. <laughs> from from, all from the, humble dialogue mm-hmm, to a royal much more, persona yes. is it being drawn out mm-hmm. from his character. Wow. Yeah, it sort of attempts a courtly language. Um, whereas <laughs> the the, uh, the wife is just plain all the way through. Just very plain I'm speaking. Consistent. So mm-hmm. that's I just you know. The way it is. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> Husband, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, it's, it's very fun. <laughs> and then Kaguya herself speaks very honestly and simply. Um, mm-hmm. she's not, she, she doesn't have the same, um, you, you can tell where her, she comes from simple people, humble people, right? These bamboo cutters. Um, but she retains that innocence, that, oh. that, that simplicity of thought and of expressing herself, um, which cool. is very cool. And then various nobles, this is very impressive. Um, they speak with culture. Mm-hmm. They have very clear language. 
uh, when they're courting her, they, they quote poetry and they'll compose, you know, lines for, the, for her just kind of off the top of their heads. But, but they don't speak, you know, oh, thou maiden, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's there's, not over the top. Yeah, yeah and like, there's, there's always the tempta- temptation to make them, you know, hugely formal. Mm. And they don't quite go that far. Uh, which is very good. So, but, real guys. Yeah, exactly. Real men, but, but <laughs> men, you know, who spent the past 20, 30 years yeah. learning all this stuff. And, and, and culture, and, uh, being raised in a culture mm-hmm. environment. Yeah, totally. Right. Um, so, particular props to um, Chloe Grace Moretz, who plays Mrs. Kaguya, um, and James Kahn, who plays the Ben Blue Cutter. Um, and, uh, Kahn! Ka- yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because cause Kaguya has to run this whole gamut. I mean, she mm. is this central character who is who appears in this world, has this very um, humble rural upbringing, mm. um, wh- wh- where, you know, and one of the great things they do is that, like, the kids, they play, but much of their time is spent, like, going out and collecting nuts in the forest. Oh, wow. And doing stuff like that, because... <laughs> Otherwise, you don't eat. You know, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, for mushrooms mm-hmm. and berries and nuts. Right. Uh, you know, and they eat. Uh, and while the parents are off, you know, tending the fields for sixteen hours a day. So um, you know, it, it, cutting it's down a, bamboo. And mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, what, what's great is that um, people have sometimes criticized Miyazaki for for kind of um, glorifying rural um, uh, oh, Japanese yes, life, right? Yes, uh, uh, which I think is a little unfair. Um, this definitely though shows the fact that. It is great, you know, growing up in fresh air and all that stuff. Does does, does 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 the princess's voice mm. change as she? Yes, grows? she does. So, yes, it does. Wow. So that, that, that as well. That, wow. Um, yeah, the, the, somebody else plays her when she's like, you know, a toddler, basically, mm. and just performing words. But then, yeah, it, it's that voice actress all the way up through, or that actress. Um, and so she has that. She has to hit that range where she's she her after this, she <laughs> smoked a million <laughs> cigarettes and uh, she's got a little bit more rasp. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, and, and and she's she has all this stuff. And now she's a, she's starting to be a princess, and now and she has all these emotional highs in those, which is the whole point oh, of the wow, film. Yeah, is that she is experiencing all these strange things, um, and you're seeing it kind of through this this foreign person's eyes, if you will. Um, and then James Kahn is this, you know, he's, he's the bamboo cutter, very humble, very simple, then also trying to be different, mm. trying to be very noble. To fulfill the roles mm-hmm. that his life has kind of given him. There totally. Um, and he's sometimes something of a comedic character, too, yeah. uh, in that, for example, he's, he's all, he has one of those traditional um, uh, Japanese like, nobles hats, the, 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 the oh, black coat yeah. hats. Um, but uh, all of the, the doorways are about this tall in his house. <laughs> um, so he's, he's constantly going to a doorway. Oh, they can pick it up and, you know, go to this place. Uh, so, you know, but at the same time, like, he, he is also the one who's always telling Princess Kaguya, like, no, you have to pluck your eyebrows. Uh-huh. No, you have to blacken your teeth. Oh. Because that's what princesses do. Wow. And he's always pushing her to be the expected formal this you know, is how you must behave mm-hmm, totally. the behavior um, of a princess even when she's miserable um, you must be a princessly miserable yeah, princess. yeah pretty much <laughs> um, so yeah amazing work by, by particularly those actors and everyone else did, does, does a very good job um, music huh. unusually is by Joe Hisaishi uh, who's done all Miyazaki's films this is his first Takahata film hmm. so um, what's, and what's great is that Hisaishi, he loves strings, uh, mm. and he, he's particularly good at light music, at uplifting music. Oh, yeah. uh, it's one of the reasons why Miyazaki likes him, because he's, he's all about flight, right? And flight always shows up in his films, and so uh, Hisaishi has that stuff. So for a fairy tale, that's the kind of stuff you want. You want light, airy, yeah. you know, um, expansive music. Um, and for the, for the serious moments, you certainly get that. Mm. Um, and particularly, like, she, she plays traditional Japanese instruments and all that cool. kind of stuff. So you hear actual songs. I should point out, before I go any further, this is the most Japanese thing I have ever seen in my life. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, just everything about it is about Japanese culture, about high court culture, about rural culture, about all these various aspects. So our friend's criticism from early in the <laughs> show is kind of has fallen <laughs> over flat as the future yeah, has played out. Definitely. Um, and, and this, it is, and I want to mention it in the review because I feel like I understand the film fairly well, having spent 20 years watching anime. Mm. It would be very hard for somebody who doesn't have a lot of exposure to these things to 
understand now, some of these things. here's a question that I have. Mm-hmm. Are any of the standard anime shorthand for emotions used, or is it no, all... So, none. So, so it's all cultural things yes. that you either have been exposed to or you haven't, and so... So, great example. Um, there's a scene where she's uh, 10 or so, and a, uh, a, a her... I don't know what you call it. Um, the woman who is uh, teaching her and, and doing all this stuff um, comes, to her, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, comes uh, to her and she has razor blades and tweezers. Uh, and the girl, you know, n- well, no, what's I, going I don't on here? No. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's not until later that you realize those are for plucking out your eyebrows. Because um, that's, yeah, that's what you do. Um, and all he shows you is that box and those implements. So and you're supposed to you're understand supposed what that to is. Know right. That's why these are here, and that's mm-hmm. why she's like, ah. Yeah, so wow. th- there's those sorts of things, and then also just, like, aspects of Japanese religious culture. You know, you see people, you know, um, uh, there's a, a Miko with the bells, and they're all, you know, going around, you know, doing that with the bells. Oh, wow. And, and doing the whole procession. Um, I don't know exactly what that whole scene was about. So it's those things where he's, he's very much making it. So this sounds like the kind of thing that... When I watch, I want to see and yes. like not have distractions Definitely. around because I could miss out something that uh, is a, is a subtle uh, cultural thing that I can yeah. identify and say, "Oh, what, what was that?" Or uh, mm-hmm. I know that. Or wow, yeah. And, and that's one of the reasons why I had to stop <laughs> yeah. so often. I was like, I'm overwhelmed. Um, and that's also an important point. This film is in many ways a strong repudiation of Japanese high culture. Oh, wow. It is basically saying, he is basically saying in this film, all of this formality, all this rigidity, all of this, you know, um, the pomp and the, pomp and the circumstance, and, and, you know, girls get sequestered off, and screw all that. That's all dumb. Mm. Don't do it. Wow. The ending, again, no spoilers, is a criticism of Buddhism. Wow. And basically the ending, again, without getting into spoilers, is... Buddhist serenity? Screw that. No, that's dumb. Don't do that. Don't have that. Wow. That's wrong. It's really amazing. Now I'm curious because yeah. how often do you see the criticism that goes along with that? Uh, there's a lot of promotion, but mm-hmm. an alternative view from inside a culture is always interesting totally. because then it's uh, an external reflection mm-hmm. of an internal culture. Yeah. Wow. And this is the, kind of the cool thing is that, you know, wow. Takahata is a kami. Um, he, he, he's, 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 been, he's been one of these very independent left think, leftist thinkers. He's very much, you know, you know, um, anti-structure. It's really funny. Um, a lot of Miyazaki's sort of politics came from Takahata, and so, but see, and he's got to be in his seventies now. So to see somebody of that age, of that stature in Japan, yeah. making such a strong statement wow. about all these things. That is surprising. Um, and also, and again, what's great about it is he's not saying, and so everyone should go back and, and farm in you know the, the rice paddies all the time, because you see, that's hard work too. Like That's yeah, not easy. It's, it's not uh, the solution. Mm-hmm, yeah. Right. Um, but, yeah, but his point is that there's, uh, um, there's all of this artificial structure. Mm. Right? There's all these silly things that, that we put on people wow. that are completely all unnecessary. All those expectations mm-hmm. and then behaviors and procedures and things that mm-hmm. people must do and live up to just because of the cultural stresses yes. of this is the way it's got to be. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I will also point out uh, this film does do a few of the Jubilee standards. Mm-hmm. Somebody does trip. <laughs> There's always a tripper. Um, <laughs> um, somebody cries on, on camera. There's always someone, ah, you know, oh. happens on camera. Um, and uh, what was the other? There's there's a, a third thing that, that, that they typically do, um, but so yes, it, it kind of those standards are in wow. there. Wow. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm blown away by this film. It's it, impressive, it is huh? it, very impressive. And again, it, it is an art house film. It's not for everyone. Mm-hmm. It's it's a slowly paced film. It's a quiet thing. Um, sorry. And um, so it's one of those things where I, I think if you don't like this film, if you start watching the film, you're like it's not for me. Totally understandable. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I know people. That who love anime and I I I am, you know I think the world of them and they're just gonna check out of this film, mm. um, but particularly if you're inter- interested in animation as an art form, mm. yeah, uh, you you dig deep on that and you're interested in this particular sort of social take mm. on that fairy tale. When when somebody who's 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 really a fan of Japanese culture be able to enjoy it, I think so. With, with, even with the criticism. Oh, of definitely, I think so. And and granted. <laughs> Um, 
Japanese people critiquing formal Heian era culture is not that unusual. Mm. You know, it, it's not hard to say that, you know, a girl would never meet her, would never even see her husband, her husband would see her until they were married. Surprise! Um, exactly. <laughs> Heck, the girl would not be seen at all in public. Wow. Right? She was expected to be completely sequestered away until she was finally ma- It was It was weird. Materialized out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, well, and imagine trying to court somebody you can never see. But, um, wow. so, I mean, so that stuff, I mean, most folks in Japan are going to kind of say, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, But to be this, um, I don't want to say complete about it, mm. but to be, um, to, to make a, a two-hour, ten-minute film detail, about that. Lots of detail. Mm-hmm. Going, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's also an emotional film. And that, that's one of, one of the, the, the tough things, is that you might watch this film, like I did, and just get really emotionally invested in Kaguya. Mm. Um, or you might not. If you don't care about Kaguya, you're going to check out. Mm. Uh, and that's fine. Um, but it's very much about sort of her journey as she's experiencing all these things and her, her, uh, uh, what she feels as a result of that and, and what that means. Now here's a little twist. Mm. Um, I have younger uh, uh, nieces, nephews. It, would this be something that I could have them sit down and watch or is it um, kind of... So, <laughs> I'm very glad you brought that up because there is lots of little kid nudity in this film. Um, <laughs> a little kid, well, I mean a little kid. Exactly, nudity, and, and but... toddlers and younger. Um, which was, I mean, uh, coming in Japan. I mean, I'm, yeah, it, 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 it was certainly, I was born naked. I don't know yeah, about exactly. you guys. <laughs> um, it is, in, it is not gratuitous in at all. Um, but it's, you know, it's fact rural of life, life type yes, of thing. Totally. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, and, and there's there's a fair amount of that. And like, you know, the girls are like Barbie dolls. You know, and the boys have a little, you know, uh, a little check mark basically. I mean, that, that's it. Um, uh, so a teaching moment, if necessary. It, it's, and it's one of those things where, you know. There are certainly parents who might have an issue with this. Mm. If you know the parents aren't, it's fine. Um, the other thing is, I think, mm, it's it, it, it's a tough call because it is a more deliberately slowly paced film. Mm. So the kids might just get bored. Um, oh, yeah. So if, they, if, it's, mm-hmm. if, they're, if they're too young. On the just... other hand, it's a, it's a beautiful cartoon. So yeah. they, you know, they could absolutely sit down and just, uh, move, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. that's what I was doing for two hours and 10 minutes is just, uh, oh my gosh. So yeah, I, I, I would definitely be aware of that. Um, it, there, there is certainly, it's kind of nice, um, you know, in case delivery service, there, there are a lot of shots up her dress, um, you know, <laughs> and she's wearing pantaloons, like it's fine, but it's well, like, you when you're on a broom. Exactly, right? you know, um, and this isn't like that at all. There, there's, there's nothing of that. Um, um, so that's, and of course it is sort of about that, that, that very formal, rigid culture. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think it will be a problem. It is, it will also be a problem also, uh, possibly with, with the, the very Buddhist imagery of the end, if mm. you will. Mm. Uh, the stuff he does to kind of evoke Buddhism, um, is, is very iconographically Buddhist. Okay. So, so if you haven't they're, seen, they're, you know, those things, that like, may be eh, it's just a bald guy or whatever. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, but other than that, yes, absolutely. And this is one of those films that... That this would be a good film also as a a test film, mm-hmm. right? If you if you if you know somebody, and you're like I don't know if they've been into anime, I don't know if they, they, they've been into this, but they like art, you know, oh, or they like wow. you know um, like art house films or, or other weird things. So, this would be an interesting sort of attack vector. Do you think we could share that with with friends who haven't experienced anime but mm-hmm. are into the arts? Yes, and do like illustration, animation, mm-hmm. and and different. Wow. Yeah, 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 it's a great That's film a for that. Great Folks who, you know, starter. Yeah, they're not going to get into Akira or, you know, Attack on Titan, mm. but they might get into something like this, mm. uh, which is definitely more artistic. So, wow, hey. Yeah, so that's my, those are my thoughts. Hope that is useful. Um, and uh, cool. I definitely plan to do at least one more video digging deeper into this this thing and going full spoiler, because there's all sorts of things to talk about in the film. <gasps> Spoilers! Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and believe me, I've only stracked, uh, scratched the surface in this video. Um, so hope you find this useful and um, check out those videos if and when they arrive. And I gotta see that. Yeah, Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs>